woman, 2008, believed that both religion and media are recognized as global forces that are pervasive and entrenched in society. They influence and shape how human beings understand, interpret, negotiate, and relate to themselves, others, and the social environment. As rightly said by Uka, 2011, Nigeria, a multicultural nation with an estimated population of about 200 million people, is a vibrant marketplace for media and religion. The church and the media have been very good um, bedfellows, let me say so, workers together. Even though it doesn't seem as if there was a deliberate policy to cultivate the friendship of the media. However, the historical foundation of the Nigerian media landscape was laid by the Presbyterian and Anglican Missionaries Enterprise. For instance, the first Nigerian newspaper press was established and published by Henry Townsend, an Anglican priest, in 1853. The Townsend media effort paved the way for establishing the CMS Press in Lagos, Nigeria in 1913, which is one of the media missionary legacies handed over to the Church of Nigeria by the Church Missionary Society. What I know is that at a point, our fathers in faith, when there is any program, they would go to the radio. The radio will make announcement. In fact, all these things that we hear through ACNN, through the primate, um, immediately when it happens, it wasn't like that. It used to be that you just be in your house, you hear through the radio that uh, so, 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 and so has happened. And at that time, only the primate, the archbishop, would know. So as at that time, information was actually very scanty. After the creation of the Church of Nigeria, there was a serious gap in information dissemination. Due to the scantiness of information, in 2004, the Church of Nigeria established a terrestrial radio station called Crowder Radio. According to Primate Peter Akiola, having a radio station will cover a wider audience than the pulpit. Crowder Radio, as we know it today, was the um, idea of Archbishop Akiola, the primate then, to bring the church up to date with communications and broadcasting. And um, at the time we started, there were financial challenges. And so we started with Crowder Communications Limited, who own Crowder Radio. And when we got the license for Crowder Radio and started to work, Akinola's tenure uh, expired and Bishop Oko came, Archbishop Oko came on board. And he continued with Crowder Radio from where Primate Akinola left it. But now went ahead to begin the process of getting a license to operate what we later uh, named ACNN. Uh, that is the television uh, aspect. I was bishop at Asaba, as the Anglican bishop of Asaba. And I was using a data broadcasting service. They have a television as a branch of it. So I would prepare messages and deliver through the television. And it was well received. So I continued like that. And when I came to this place, I was interested in continuing that type of ministry. But there was no avenue. So I said, how can we do like this? It means we will be left behind. In the meantime, the new generation churches have gone very far. 
their messages get to the people. And we, irrespective of our claim to old age, which is not false, it's true, we were not able to get to the people. And then I ask myself, now, it was a time for computer, it was a time for information. How can we get to the future? How can we be relevant in the future without a television house? It worried me and uh, I started to think about how to get a television for our church. I think that ACMN was a vision from God given to Baba Oko and Bishop Oko. Yes. And which God in his own way has used some of the members of the church to, to support, to bring it to where it is. Actually, ACNN license, we had only one communications company, that was Crowder uh, Communications, that owned Crowder Radio. Then ACNN was initially under Crowder Radio because that was, the license was given to us on that basis. And we started with uh, Bishop, uh, Bishop Taiwo, late Bishop Taiwo started Crowder Radio and uh, Horeden, the current managing director or GM, uh, joined with some other groups before him to start ACNN. It was a challenging because, first of all, to get the money for the license was not easy. They said it is possible. It is possible. I said, it's okay, but we don't have much money because technology is money. And I know that television is technology start to finish. There were some young people, particularly the youth, who believed that it is something we could do. And so, <laughs> we called us, we asked for proposals, and the chap brought proposals that if we do it like this, after some time we will even start to get gain. That thing was a, a lot of encouragement. I said, gain? He said, yes. Said, all right, but how will we pay the staff and all the people, this and that? He said, initially, we will have to look for money, but soon enough, we begin to have something. That's all right. So with doubt and with faith, which is contradictory, we continue to move on. Now, when the man brought the first bill, we were to go through London, I think London or so, um, that every month we pay in dollars. So there was no money, but in, uh, during Baba Kionla's uh, tenure, there was this uh, endowment fund which he organized, and the money was still there untouched. So, we decided, after consulting the treasurer and uh, some members of the, the church, whom we consider to be knowledgeable about that, that uh, we could take this money monthly on loan. So as we were taking the money, the loan started to accumulate in a big way. He said, we cannot go on like this. Old. Because to repay it was uh, not something feasible. So we started to cry out. We cry out to members of the Anglican Church whom we consider to be well endowed and blessed by God to explain what we wanted to do for the church and for the future. In the course of that explanation, um, Bishop Belu Johnson, 
So he came, he said that in his church, somebody once expressed interest in such a program, such a project, that he will go and speak to them and get back to us. We were very happy. He went and he brought back um, a defying result. The Advent Cable Network officially started operations on the 12th of September 2013 with the commissioning done by the then President of Nigeria, His Excellency Goodluck Ebele Jonathan. Although test transmission started in March 2013, broadcasting on Channel 91 of My TV. There was a team of media people that were put together uh, to come up with, uh, to actualize, to try to concretize and structure what this thing should be about. So we sat severally to work out a proposal about what it should be and design uh, the vision, the, the mission, and the kinds of programs that you know, we thought you know, should come up. I was one of those who came in in 2013 at the starting point. And um, I must say, when we came in, we were like those uh, given the talents to go and trade. And um, nothing on ground. So we made our efforts. The very first challenge we had is sensitizing our people. Even up to now, they are still claiming no knowledge of uh, the existence of ACNN. But we thank God for who he is. He has been able to bring us to where we are so far. The awareness is uh, becoming a reality. And uh, at least we can boast of a good number of churches within Abuja and outside wanting to make use of ACNN. We started work and it took time before the, the church generally, I'm talking of the diocese, the parishes could come on board. It was a talk of what to get them to patronize our own television station. Because the bishops were determined and they were committed, we began to get the dioceses to bring their programs to ACNN and thank God for the quality of the work they were doing, for the dedication of the staff of ACNN. At that humble beginning, we got quality uh, work and people gradually were getting attracted and started to put their programs, their synods, their diocesan boards and some other programs on ACNN. We crafted things that we felt the church should be interested in. So we also came up with this program called The First Institution, where we focused on the family. Welcome to First Institution, our program on marriage and the family. Having previously discussed Christian courtship and marriage, today, we shall spotlight the role of an effective Christian husband. I am Kemi Williams, and to examine the subject with me today are our guest. On my extreme left is Mrs. Modukbe Akinkube, a retired banker and presently the treasurer, Diocese of Abuja Anglican Communion. Yeah. And next to me on my left is Barrister. Namdi Asmoga. Well, there was a program called Man Alive. Man Alive was to take care of uh, the men as an audience. Usually you think in terms of, oh, let's do something for women, you know. But we thought, oh, let's also do something that men would be interested in and we, that would also benefit men as Christians. Good day, my brothers in the Christ. I sincerely welcome you to another wonderful episode of Man Alive. Today we shall be dealing on the topic, 
the needs and the challenges of man and how he could find those needs and challenges within the context of the Bible. The needs of man has never changed, but the world has changed. And there was another one called um, uh, multitasking, the multitasking uh, uh, person, which was actually focusing on the woman. We were trying to let people know that women are very versatile. They've been created specially by God, let me put it that way, you know, uh, to do several things. And one of the things that they, they are good at is doing so, several things at the same time. They, they were the earliest programs that we were working on. Hello viewers. On today's episode of the Multitasking Creation, we shall be discussing financial management. Women, as managers of the home, should know and practice financial responsibility. For the married, this is part of being a helpmate. It is essential to know how to live within an income, how to manage money, and how to give, and how to save. To discuss this topic with me are Mrs. Aderonke Agumbe Ade. She is a retired banker of the First Generation Bank, a wife, mother of four, and presently into small-scale enterprise. You're welcome to the program today, Ma. It's good to see you. Thank you. And also joining her is Mrs. Yuni Sonyegiri, a businesswoman, mother, and grandmother. You're welcome to the program. Thank and I'm you your host, much. Angela Wenze. We once invited a, a person, a clergyman, to be the, the manager who gave us a bill that um, even if we had to sell all the equipment, we would not be able to meet up the man's demand. That was after Nusa's uh, um, departure, when uh, Nusa left the place, and then uh, Mrs. Anyang also left. We came to know Zero point, we came to ground zero. And so, then they said, are we going to close down since there is no leader? And so on and so forth. Then somebody among those who visited my, who were with me in the office that they said, uh, there is a young man who can help us manage on until we are able to get somebody since this man's demand is too much. I say, go and put that man there. It was out of desperation because I didn't want to close down. Like the Bible says, you want to build a house and you did not first count the cost and now you started to build and you cannot finish. The consequence will be nothing but shame. So the fear of shame did not allow us to say close down. I say, let the young man go on until we are able to get money to pay big people like this man. So the young man continued <laughs> and I think till today that is how we have arrived where we are. And I'm very grateful for his resourcefulness because little by little, little by little, little by little, we are now able to call ourselves in a, a name and we are meeting the need of the church. I think um, so far, so good. The future is pregnant. Looking at you, you can run CNN, you, this group. There is nothing that is not here in this group. So the Church of Nigeria expects that you will lead us. Either we are migrating from one channel to another, this thing, you will take us there. We were just six or so, or seven. Uh, Phoebe, uh, Dairo Israel, um, Mrs. Nelly Ajiboye, who was actually 
on a commission-based uh, staff, and one other guy, Ifan <coughs> Yota, um, who was also a commission-based marketing staff then. So the two of them are not a full staff. But I think uh, other people who were still around there was uh, Esther Oke, um, uh, Chris Ojimba is a chima. And then um, we had, uh, of course, the full backing of the communication office of the Church of Nigeria then, the late Bishop uh, Folusha Taiwo, and uh, um, now Mrs. Songozi Adibe. She, she was then Songozi uh, Madwoma. And so those were just the, <laughs> the I mean, the entire staff of VCN strength at that then were just about five that you can say, oh, they're on payroll. Others were just small or less. So this was what was handed over with, of course, equipment much in bad shape, everything almost down. And so it's actually a big challenge that I was very, very much discouraged. I couldn't even say that this is what to do. But one way or the other, God was just dropping inspirations of what to do, of course, and liaising with people of like minds. And so we just begin to gradually work on things. I uh, begin to source for core members, church, young church members who are very committed and possibly have nothing doing. Uh, that was where someone like Azuka came in. Uh, that was where someone like Samuel Iola, those who have really committed themselves, committed their life to this work. They were not full staff, we were just paying them, talking, they come around and then we are working, trying to do a lot of things uh, with the little knowledge I have. We are in configuring the studio, the equipment to be able to do what we wanted it to do, even with the little resources. So we began to bring in people with a mindset of mission, uh, not people looking for a job. Uh, then I do tell everybody then, if you are looking for a job, don't come here because it's not where you are going to get uh, salary or whatever. So we begin to see, so anytime I travel or I go anywhere and I see young, passionate people, with, I try to encourage them. Some of them will finally get to come to Abuja, they come around. We're just running it. Gradually, those who were graduate interns and core members were the ones we were now using, and then volunteers, and uh, things were gradually picking up. Uh, we came up with uh, a live broadcast equipment that uses IPTV, IP, uh, internet protocol to broadcast inside of the carrying big dish around. So these are some of the changes that God brought about and then begin to channel more effort on our content, on ensuring that contents are much more uh, appealing to the Anglican communion and all those things. Begin, we drop down the cost of airing programs on ACNN and all those things. So. Uh, people began to develop interest in uh, ACNN. On the 12th of December 2019, the studio was named after Modupe and Folorusho Alakija, who were major financial contributors to the studio. And the name was changed for Anglican Cable Network Nigeria to Advent Cable Network Nigeria. When I came in here as the General Secretary, ACNN was operating at its own best, but not so much as it is right now. They were managing the space at WUSE Zone 5, but with the building of the Church of Nigeria Secretariat and the allocation of the wing of the second floor to ACNN, ACNN now has a very big studio it is able to accommodate other programs and new ideas and initiatives have come on board in ACNN. So I want to say that I am so proud of what ACNN is doing. They've improved from where I met them 
and I know the way they are walking, they are going places by the grace of God. The ACNN is the best mouthpiece for the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, which is today the most virile, the most potent, the most outspoken, and the largest body in the entire Anglican Communion. ECNN is the best thing that can happen to the Church of Nigeria because the Church of Nigeria is the official church of this country. Therefore, with the presence of the Anglican Church in virtually every nook and cranny in Nigeria, it's important for the voice to be known to the world. If it were not ACNN, how would we have coped with relating to our members during this COVID-19 crisis? Recently, I was in the UK and somebody rushed to me. I said, God will bless you continually. I've never met him before. He said, I watch you, I follow you every Friday. And your program on SCNN has made my Christianity in this part of the world to stand firm. I was shocked. And wherever we go, people say, oh, we were with you last night. I say, where? Are they say, SCNN. It's uh, amazing to see that over the years, nearly these last five, six years, SCNN has now grown to become a household name uh, in so many of our homes. Uh, within the Church of Nigeria, and actually, I was impressed when people outside of the Anglican Church also tell us about the fact that they're able to view the ACNN TV. Surely, ACNN TV has uh, provided platform for people to be able to reach out uh, with the gospel, to be able to minister to the needs of people, uh, either spiritually or otherwise. So really, ACNN TV uh, is something for which we have to give thanks to God for. Uh, it's very interesting to know now that ACNN runs right through the clock. Whenever you need to see ACNN, you know ACNN is available. ACNN TV is available with one program after the other. And the fact that it covers, gives coverage to so many services and the ceremonies of the church now is another very important thing. ACNN TV... You know, it's on, t it's on uh, Facebook as well, it's on the TV, and so you really find that it has... So even when you cannot even attend a particular event now, you can depend on ACNN TV to bring that uh, to you. So it's, it's good to see that over the past few years, it has actually stabilized. It has also grown, especially with personnel and more people who are now available to serve faithfully and diligently. Uh, for me, it's always a thing of joy whenever I come back and I see that, you know, many more faces have been recruited uh, to serving with ACNN TV. So this is really a thing of joy for us and that ACNN TV now is able to also go to Synod, is able to attend several events in various places and bring them very close to uh, the viewers. The Joshua generation you have done given a lot of publicity to the Joshua generation. And you can see how Joshua generation is growing by leaps and bounds. The usual annual like, conference is fantastic. And I believe part of the reason why it has grown so much is the, is the activity of ACNN in publicizing their activities, their programs. And other programs that you stream, they are challenging to the youth and we must keep our youth busy or else we will have a problem in keeping them within the church. And I've enjoyed every part of the broadcast that you have been giving. In fact, sometimes the most important ones that I enjoy is when you are, you know, broadcasting music, choral music from different areas. It also, also inspires me on my days that I'm down and sometimes it also gives me new tunes of hymns that I enjoy while serving. So it has been of great inspiration to me as a person and the dances of Cameroon because most people have this channel and they enjoy it. They have been awesome, very professional in presentation, very straight to matters, 
giving relevant news not only on spiritual matters but national and global issues. SCNN is the radio television station to beat. So I, I am glad and I'm proud, I am confident to celebrate and identify with this television outfit of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. I've been with SCNN since 2013. Um, I have um, been airing uh, programs, majorly our work among the youth, known as Single Single Youth Outreach. And these past 10 years has been awesome, so much awesome. Number one is that this platform has helped us to um, preach and to teach and to educate, especially the young people, on issues that border of leadership, career, and um, even their um, development that has to do with relationships. I've received so many feedbacks, um, especially whenever there is a, a gathering, maybe BitCon or um, General Synod or Standing Committees, uh, people I have never met before, so many of them uh, usually will stop me and tell me, ah, your message and your program has been a blessing to me and to my family. So ACNN, ACNN has helped us to take out the message that God has given to us to the international world and it's um, very exciting as far as I am concerned. What ACNN is doing today um, is a commendation, you know, uh, the labors of those who started the mission. And I can see young people serving in this organization, showing commitment, showing competence, and also showing clear vision. And of course, the television, uh, the content of the television, um, uh, I think has met international standard in terms of news content, in terms of whatever they're doing. And also the contribution of HCNN in advancing the mission and ministry of the church uh, gives glory to God. And we believe that um, more people will key into it. We also believe that with ACNN, the kingdom of God will be expanded more here and outside the shores of Nigeria. We live in a world you know, of a failing hope. People are frustrated. People are angry because of the situation of things in the country. But when I wake up in the morning, I put on my ACNN TV, and then I listen to the music ministration. It lifts my spirits, and it gives me hope. There are daily fountain devotional. It's another one I love to listen to, especially at 6 a.m. every day. The practical words that we receive from that is also gives me that confidence to walk out of my day, of my house every day, with you know, hope that things will change. Um, the Bible study is another one. I love to listen to that. It's interactive, and it gives off a deeper knowledge and understanding of the Word of God. ACNN, I see it as um, our generation is, is um, impacting the next generation. We, from that, we learn a lot about our Anglican heritage. Our children are impacted and led to understand our principles, the Christian principles and the Christian values. They are all impacted. Me, as a person, again, um, it has helped me as a lay reader in my church to learn, I have insight when I listen to the word of God from great men of God, I have insights. And men, these are men I wouldn't have even listened to if I'm sitting in my local church. So it gives me that opportunity to hear from them and improve on my own knowledge of the word of God. ACNN came on board at a time when I was at a crossroad. I was you know, struggling with how to be able to pass my message across to the world out there uh, because my department is meant to sensitize the society 
uh, my department is meant to uh, respond to the ills and the challenges that the citizens are facing. And at the same time, I was supposed to be running seminars, uh, educational seminars for my directors, for uh, Anglican faithfuls, and all that. And I didn't have the means to be able to do that. And at that point, ACNN came on board and it became uh, a major tool for my department. And since then, we have always been in ACNN talking to the whole world, addressing issues in the nation. You know, without me necessarily going to be looking for a media house where I will pay heavily and be given a slot of maybe 20 to 30 minutes. Every week, all these years, we have been on ACNN for one hour every week. And uh, that has been wonderful for my department. Wow, ACNN, 10 years. I have been waiting for this interview for the past, I think, 10 years. And really, this is a training ground or has been a training ground for me. You know, I came in not knowing anything about broadcasting. I had no idea. In fact, mommy Deborah Gazuma saw me at a discussion and she just said, oh, I wanted to come and host the program. And I just, I was so scared. In fact, I had no experience whatsoever, but she trained me. And we started multitasking creation. We did that, I think about 12 episodes. And after that, and I moved on to Health Watch. I have had the best trainings of my life. I have had the best experience and I've worked with the most amazing pe persons. Phoebe, Phoebe has been my producer from the beginning. My training, she would, she would grill you and bring out the best in you. I'm so grateful to ACNN. What has it done for me? I'm confident. In fact, I can talk anywhere without fear because if you have that experience, that grilling, it makes you, gives you the ability to reach out to any platform. In fact, I got a job with another TV station. Well, you may call it a bigger TV station, but well, I think ACNN is bigger. But I had a job, with, I got an offer from another TV station. But when I thought of ACNN, I said, oh, I'm not going anywhere. I love this place. I love the family. I love the interaction. I love the expertise. I love the professionalism. I love the vision, the drive. I am impressed with ACNN. In fact, I would recommend that may all Anglicans should come to ACNN for training. You might not use it in journalism, you might not be expert, but it will help you with discipline, it will help you with, with boldness, it will help you with, um, you know, it will help you, honestly. That's my recommendation because it has impacted my life and I'm enjoying it and I'm still here and I'm still going to be here doing Health Watch. And don't forget to keep watching Health Watch and learn, health watch and learn much about how to keep yourself healthy. When I look and I listen to various programs of the ACNN, my faith is renewed and um, my life is kept in shape in my relationship with God and man. But I must tell you that um, since the establishment of the ACNN, <laughs> when I've retired, I hardly go out or said I go to church programs for the church programs or on invitation to attend some other social programs. I feel very fulfilled and I feel challenged. And this time, you know, I've risen to have a bit of a disappointment or discomfort. I'm always encouraged when I look at the programs of the ACNN. We thank God that ACNN has survived the first 10 years of its establishment. It wasn't the easiest of things, projects, to meet wife. I think thus far it's been, for me, miracle of uh, having just few hands, and now we are SNN uh, staff capacities way far ahead times four of what we met it, and uh, quite a lot of volunteers, people who just want to come and serve, just want to come and see how we are doing things. 
a lot of IT students have passed through this place, a lot of coppers, a lot of uh, a lot of different even experienced hands have been here to support us uh, to train some of our staff. So for us, uh, it's been a gradual process. It's been, we are not yet there. Uh, we are not yet there. There is something that we are seeing ahead. Uh, we are not yet there. But we are still making effort to be there. Uh, some of the things we are doing now to help uh, is training of the staff. Uh, because this is uh, an organization that requires regular training, uh, equipment and code changes with time. Uh, it's a creative industry that people need to sit down and be creative with what they are doing. So training of the staff is one of the things we are doing. And um, um, one other thing is expanding uh, locations. Uh, for now, we make travel all across Nigeria from Abuja to wherever we are going. But we are already making efforts to open our office in Lagos. The office is already there. It's just equipping it. Uh, we are already making moves to also open an office in the east and then one in the south-south uh, and then possibly one in the core north. So <coughs> these are efforts we are putting in place as of now that uh, we are only uh, praying to God for essential funds to come in to be able to do that. But uh, basically these are some of the things we are doing to promote the station. Now we've been able to devise means of ensuring that we're able to broadcast from anywhere. Uh, we don't need to be, in fact, most of the time we don't even need to be there physically. We can broadcast. Uh, we, we are getting programs directly from US, from UK, onto the TV. Uh, these are, all these have been done with the little or no resources that we have. But what drives us is the fact that we are able to proclaim Christ. The journey has been hard and tedious. But to thank God who has ensured the survival of, of, of ACNN. Despite the hitches, bottlenecks and the present platform MyTV, there are desires to migrate to the DSTV platform for better reach and wider coverage. On the on issue of moving to DSTV, um, we have been on that for a long time. We've been to the office of DSTV. Uh, there's been review of our content. There have been promises by DSTV to have a CNN on their platform, but of course they also told us the challenges they are also facing and why uh, they want to have some level of uh, reductions on religious channels on their platform uh, because their uh, aims and their visions is not about having so much of religious content but they are much more focused on entertainment. So, uh, but we've been assured that as soon as they are able to have some review of their policies and some other things, uh, that the Anglican TV, the CNN is one of the uh, considered channel uh, based on our track records and what we have done is what they are considering to put on. So we are hoping that very soon that will be done. CNN TV currently has 40 staff strength, including full-time and volunteers, producing close to 20 programs weekly, both live and recorded. Things are getting better. Even this studio, we didn't know that we will be here by now. And um, I believe that by the grace of God, we will build on that. I think ACNN has gone really far. You know, I want to give you credit uh, for that. ACNN has gone far. You have a good studio. You have people who are committed. 
producers who are committed, you have engineers, you have the management is committed to giving the best. You know, you've gone far. You may have even gone further than what people felt would happen in, in, in the space of, of, of 10 years. I think SNN is pulling its weight and you are doing pretty well, you know, trying to project uh, the church and trying to give support to mission and evangelism. You know, I think you are actually doing very, very well. The only thing is that a project like this will need to uh, be a consistent and uh, as we notice problem, we mobilize what we need to mobilize to overcome such challenges. What I just want to advise is that there's need for more consultation and uh, for the television station to partner with you know other dioceses that have not been that prominent, you know, and I think we are going to high places. We should intentionally expose the staff of ACNN, send them to the best training institutions beyond what they already have. Training is a continuous process. We should be able to rank with the class of CBS and the CNN and BBC. We have the capability to do that. Therefore, we must invest in training. Number two, we must heavily invest in all the equipment that they need. Equipment are changing. The life is changing. Developments are happening. You bought a computer five years ago. That computer is no longer fashionable today. Today, we don't even have cars that use a cassette any longer. Even CD is getting out of fashion. So equipments are getting more modernized. And so people are making the best use of satellites. And I think what we need to do is to give them equipment. And thirdly, we should be able to properly remunerate them and fund ACNN. Let them have everything that they need. And um, they should also be able to have uh, branches in virtually every province in the Church of Nigeria. We're a very large church, and uh, it should be possible for us to have offices of ACNN in all provinces to the extent that the programs that we are to contribute to uh, we, 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 will, be, will be recorded right in all the provinces. We, you will need to come to Abuja and travel, very expensive ticket, air ticket, or risky road travel because we want to record daily fancy. We should be able to record where we are and send them to the central office. If AIT, if uh, NTA, all of them can have a central headquarters and they have branches everywhere, ACNN should do that. We are the voice of Christianity in Nigeria today. And so that is all I say. Improve the condition of service, including the salaries, fund it very well, improving the advertisements and improving the equipment and training, and then let us re-envision the ACNN so that it can be a tool, not just for entertainment, but also for evangelism, especially in this case that we are dealing with youth flights from our church. Majority of the churches have youths not being present in the Anglican church. Many don't know what Anglicanism is. They don't understand some of our doctrine. We need to make this particular ACNA also a second theological college so that people can be trained. All our laity, the wardens, the choir, and the, all officers of the church evangelists, there should be training programs online for every one of them. That is how we can expand in evangelism, in outreach, in mission, also in strategizing for reaching out with the gospel to different crannies of the world. Our expectation is to see NCNN TV in the next decade reach out to over 30 million viewers. For now, we can boast of over 4 million viewership. As at now, the station is very active on many social media handles. We are all over the place. They are, they, they, people are watching us from Nigerian and outside this country. Our wish is to be on DSTV, the multi-choice parent body of DSTV has placed us on standby for a year now. We hope as we move into the next decade, they will, they, will, they will reconsider our application and get us on the TSTV. I want to see more patronage from our church members.
as stakeholders in Nigeria and world over. A television cannot sustain itself without adequate patronage from our members. Some of our members of the Anglican Communion are top government officials and businessmen and women. They must patronize us with adequate advertisements. My overall expectation is to see the station in every home, especially the Christian families in Nigeria and worldwide. As we move into the next decade, we are hoping that we shall reach more souls and harvest them into God's kingdom. The, the point is that the ACNN itself still has a long way to go. It's still in the process of being established. Because it's not yet buoyant. In my opinion, it still requires a huge amount of money to be able to stand on a solid foundation. So when it gets to that point, it should not forget that it was established for a particular reason, which is the spread of the gospel. But even now, ACNN needs funds because, like I said, television is technologically intensive and so financially intensive. There is nothing, look at, just compare CNN with Al Jazeera. These are leading stations. And the, what the difference between them and others is nothing but money. They pay for everything. They buy the, the, the lead, the costliest. They send people anywhere. ACNN we play much more major roles in the life and ministry of the Church of Nigeria, not only within Nigeria, but across the globe. Our intention, by the grace of God, is that our focus in ministry, our focus in mission, our focus on evangelism and the teaching of the word of God and discipleship will be driven through you. So, for us to make it, I think the, the standing committee or general synod must ensure that as an organ of the Church of Nigeria, there is a standing fund to encourage and support the work of ACNN because it's just beginning. It has not arrived. It should come to a point where it can even raise enough money and support the church. But before it does that, the church has to support ACNN. It's like paying school fees for your children. When your children are of age and qualified and are working, they will look back and sponsor you. So I see ACNN in the next 10 years raising a good reservoir of manpower. I see our activities as a church being better um, organized, being well known. Nobody can tell lies against us. We will tell our story. We will be able to tell our own story. Nobody is going to say the Anglican or CMS Church, as they used to call us, is uh, uh, like this, like this. We will say what we are. And because we are powerful enough to speak and we have a voice, everybody will know we accept it. We will not be depending on what people say 
about us. We will have authentic identity. That is the type of thing that ACNN must focus on. We should, if possible, have means of sending our candidates on course. You know, that's why I like the army job. Army doesn't give you anything without training you to do it. If they are going to make you a last couple, you go on course. If you are going to be a, 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 a captain, you go on course. I want to appeal to the church. Fortunately, ACNN courts across Anglicanism. They also appeal to other Christians and non-Christians. They should watch the television. You may meet Jesus there. That's the only way you may see Jesus direct. He can speak to you. And uh, when you have burdens, because this world is full of burdens, just tune to ACNN. You will encounter Jesus. In any of the sermons, in any either the Bible study, or prayer hour, or one thing or the other. God bless your future.